The endless desire of greed is greed blocking you from the wonderful blessing of contentment that is promised and that is given by the Lord. Now, when I began to consider this message for today and this week, mm-hmm. I want you to know that Thanksgiving was on my mind. Yeah. The cold yeah. weather and mm-hmm. the fall colors. Right. Thanksgiving was on my mind. And as you hear me say around this time every year, I am very appreciative of the Lord and I give him all of my thanks And I don't wait for just one day or one season of the year. I believe in giving God my thanks every day of the year. The reason why I do this is because God has truly satisfied my soul. Mm -hmm. When I say that God has satisfied my soul, I want you to understand that I am both content in my soul And I am happy in my soul as well. I have learned how to be content regardless of what state I am in because I have realized that the Lord truly has blessed me. I don't know if any of you feel that same way, but that is how I feel. And I feel I must share that. I feel I must express that to all of you today. I feel I must express that to you today because it seems that more and more people do not give God credit. They do not give God thanks. They don't do so for even just one day of the year. And I tell you this because it frustrates me. It frustrates me a a great deal. As I have said in the past, many people do not give God any credit because they feel that he does not bless them Mm -hmm. or that he does not bless them enough or because they feel that they go out and they get their own blessings on their own accord. There is this notion that blessings only come in the form of what one can gain. of what one can possess materially. Mm -hmm. You see, we live in an age of materialism. Now, this is not a new age, but the desire to gain materials in our world today, it has truly overcome the hearts of mankind. Many people, they define themselves, they define their blessings, they define their successes Mm -hmm. by what it is that they have, what it is that they have gained, what it is that they possess. So in this age, there is no such thing as having enough. No, you have to go out and get more and more. With the endless desire of gaining more, making you happy, happy in your soul. Mm -hmm. Born is greed. Our constant urge to gain more and more possessions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yet I tell you today that your greed will actually block you from ever truly being happy. Your greed will block you from experiencing the wonderful blessing of contentment Mm -hmm. that is promised, that is given by the Lord. So I want to take time here today to focus on greed. I want to take time here today to focus on the blessing of contentment, if you will allow me to. The blessing of contentment. There is a major hang up that many people have when it comes to being content. All right. The major hang up that many of us have when it comes to being content, it boils down to our confusing of being content with being complacent. All right. You see, we should not be confusing these two words, contentment and complacent. They are not one in the same. They are not synonymous with one another. You see, being complacent is defined as being marred by Mm self-satisfaction 
Especially when accompanied by unawareness of actual dangers or deficiencies. Mm -hmm. So in other words, one who is complacent shows a lack of concern. They show a lack of drive. They show a lack of motivation yes, in yes. doing or being better. Mm -hmm. We would say that one who is complacent is one who is lazy. And as I said earlier this year, just a few months ago, we don't like that word lazy. No one wants to be called. No one wants to, wants to be known as a lazy person. We should not confuse the word complacent with contentment. And I want you to see what contentment is defined as. Right. To be content is to be appeased and to be satisfied with one's possessions, with one's status, and with one's situation. Yeah. But here is the key difference between complacency and contentment. Mm -hmm. The person that has reached this place of contentment in their heart has reached a goal after putting forth a great amount of effort. Yeah, yeah. And after this great amount of effort that they have put forth, the person that is content in their hearts, they are satisfied with their effort. Whether they reach that goal or not, they put forth effort, they put forth hard work, if you will, and they are satisfied with that hard work that they put forth. So in their hearts, they become content. Yeah, yeah. Again, we should not be confusing being content with being complacent. One has put forth hard work while the other has become lazy. All right. In fact, I would tell you today that I believe that everybody has a strong desire to be content in their hearts at the end of the day. All of us want to be satisfied. All of us, I believe, want to be happy at the end of the day. The problem, however, is how we go about it, how we go about trying to be content in our hearts at the end of the day. Some of us, we are dependent on our faith in the Lord. Mm -hmm. What I mean by this is that we rely on him. We rely on his providence. Yeah. We rely on his blessings to satisfy us in our hearts, mm -hmm. to make us happy in our soul. Mm -hmm. At the same time, there are many people who struggle with being content with what God has given to them. Yeah. what God has provided to them, what the Lord has blessed them with. Because they are not satisfied with God's blessings, they go out trying to gain more and more. Yeah. This yeah. is greed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, in the Bible, we often find that Scripture encourages the believer to put away covetousness, yeah. yeah. to put away lust, mm -hmm and to put away greed. Yeah. Okay. Now, some may suggest, as they often do when it comes to God and when it comes to a preacher like me who will preach on this subject, mm -hmm. they will suggest that God and a preacher must desire for us to be poor. All right, all right. God must not want us to be rich. God must not want us to have much. And now the preacher is standing up telling me that I ought not want to be rich, yeah. that I ought not want to have much. Mm -hmm. now, this could not be any further from the truth. All right. As we know that God ultimately desires for his children yeah. Yeah. to be happy in their soul. Mm -hmm. God desires for you to be content at the end of the day. But here's the thing about God. Yeah, yeah. God wants to be the one that makes you happy at the end of the day. Yeah. All right. 
God desires for you to be happy mm -hmm. and he is the one that wants to satisfy you. God is the one that wants to make you happy in your soul. I don't know if you hear me here today. Come on. So this is why scripture always encourages us yeah, yeah. to put away our own selfish ambitions. Oh, yeah to put away our greed mm -hmm. and trust in God to satisfy us, right. to trust in God to bless us, yeah. to trust in God making us content mm -hmm. in our soul. Right. I don't know if you hear me here today. I know we hear you. Yeah. Now, we'll see here in his letter to Timothy in the mm -hmm. scripture that we read for our responsive reading from the sixth chapter of first Timothy. Mm -hmm. We we'll see here in my key verse that Paul touches on this subject. Yeah, yeah. Paul will see him say here that those who desire to be rich mm -hmm. fall into temptation mm -hmm. and a snare. Oh, yeah. Is what Paul says there. Mm -hmm. And then we'll see that Paul went on to say that they will fall into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction mm -hmm. and perdition. Mm -hmm. Now, I would suggest to all of you that this is a very strong statement that Paul has made here today. Yeah. Yeah. I would suggest that this is a very strong statement from Paul that he has made about the very strong urge and desire that has overcome the hearts of many who have lived in our world and many who live in our world today. Right. We we'll see that Paul is essentially stating that obtaining riches, meaning possessions will not make one happy. That's right. Will not satisfy them in their soul. Mm -hmm. In fact, Paul is telling us that it would do otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. He said that it will lead men to their destruction and to perdition is what we see Paul say there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You see, the, the happiness that Paul spoke of was a happiness mm -hmm. that is just like everything else that is in our world. All right. It is a happiness that is temporary. Mm -hmm. You see, we can be happy for one minute and the next minute we can be down bad. We can be so down in our feelings. Sadly, that's just the way things are in this life. The ups and the downs of life. One moment we can be joyful. The next moment we can be sad and depressed. Now the happiness that we ought to desire is an eternal happiness, mm -hmm. one that fulfills our soul. The problem with greed is that the greed for riches is essentially an endless quest to satisfy one's soul with desires that will go unfulfilled. Right. The riches may make you happy for a moment, mm -hmm. But that moment, I tell you today, it will not last. Okay, so those who are dependent on fulfilling their happiness with the riches and the possessions of this world, mm -hmm. they end up being driven to again gain more and more because the riches that they have gained have not satisfied them, have not made them happy in their soul. Yeah, yeah, all right. Now, what is incredibly scary about the strong desire for riches, as we have seen recently, is that the devil offers the riches of this world as treasure to make one happy in their soul. Yes, yes. Sadly, many people have bought into the devil's notion that what they truly need to make them happy in their soul is the riches and what they can gain in this world. The devil again tells them that the riches is what makes them happy. The riches of this world is what makes them blessed. All right. 
You see, this is the snare for the soul. This is the snare that the devil has planted in the world. And many of us, we are caught up in this snare of trying to satisfy our soul by going out and gaining more and more where we should be laying up our treasures in heaven. Mankind is overcome by the desire to have more and more riches, believing that these riches will make them happy. What is so heartbreaking about this is that many people are driving themselves absolutely crazy, trying to gain as many possessions as they possibly can in their life. There are so many people who spend a lifetime trying to gain all the riches of this world, and yet they find their soul not fulfilled. Somebody's not going to like hearing this today, but it is the truth. It never leaves my mind when Jesus asked this question in the Gospels. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he asked, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? That question, it never leaves my mind when I watch how badly people hunger and thirst and are driven solely to gain the riches of this world, believing that it will make them happy. Yet all at the same time, they're doing nothing but losing their soul. It makes me... It it makes me sad in my spirit to see it Mm -hmm. for the child of God. We should be totally dependent on the Lord to supply our every need and to satisfy us in our soul, Mm -hmm. to make us happy. Mm -hmm. As Paul wrote to the Philippians, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches according to his glory Mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus. Instead of mankind being dependent on the Lord to satisfy them in their soul, Mm -hmm. they have betrayed God. We have betrayed the Lord and we have become dependent on the riches of this world Mm -hmm. to make us happy Mm -hmm. in our soul. Mm -hmm. Instead of putting our faith in God, mankind has put their faith in the world, Mm -hmm. in the possessions, in the riches, Mm -hmm. in the materials. We are putting our faith in a worldly treasure. We are putting our faith, as Jesus said, in mammon. Mm -hmm. And we are serving it as a master. There are so many people who are so hung up on riches that they are now defining themselves. They're defining their lives by what they have. Mm -hmm. This is both dangerous and sad because too many of us are valuing ourselves by what we have instead of how God has loved us, how God has provided for us, Mm -hmm. how God has made a way for us. You see, God loving you, I believe it means a great deal more than the possessions that you may have gained in your lifetime. God's love towards you is of great significance. Mm -hmm. It is of great importance. It means a whole lot more than this world. However, many people do not view their lives in such a way. Uh And this again is truly sad. It is heartbreaking to me. Now, what we see Paul say there in my key verse for today, Uh what we see him say there about the grand desire to be rich, We'll see in scripture that this is something that Jesus also taught about as well, and that he taught to the disciples. In the 12th chapter of Luke's gospel, and in the 15th verse, Mm -hmm. we'll see that Jesus said to the disciples, 
He said, beware of covetousness. He said, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. Again, Jesus said there, beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. So what Jesus is saying to us there with that statement is that life is about more than what you possess. Life is a more about more than what you can gain or what you desire to gain in worldly riches, Mm -hmm. in worldly materials, in worldly possessions. Life means more than that. That does not come from me. That comes from Christ himself. Now, the idea that life is about more than what we can gain, the idea that life is about more than what one can possess is one that many people will not understand in this age of materialism. All right, all right. We're so hung up on riches. Yeah. We're too hung up on possessions mm-hmm. that we are valuing them things over our own. And God had to come to this world himself and tell us personally, your life means more than that. Mm -hmm. Life is not just about the worldly riches. That is what God has just said to us. Mm -hmm. The Lord was determined for us to understand how important it is not to view our life as simply a goal of gaining riches. All right. He didn't create us for that. Mm -hmm. God did not create you just for worldly materials. I hope you understand that today. So we see Jesus here in Luke's gospel speaking of covetousness to the disciples. Mm -hmm. Now we should understand that covetousness is essentially the same as greed. All right. You see, they are synonymous with one another. Mm -hmm. We can become so overcome in our desire to have more that we can desire to have what others have. Mm -hmm. This desire comes from a a perception that what others have gained, what they possessed, it has made them happy. Because it seems like they are walking around in in our world today happy and with big smiles on their faces. Mm -hmm. So what we have gained because we don't feel happy, we look at what they have and we say to ourselves, I want what they have. I I, want to get what they have because what they have gained, the riches that they have have made them happy. So if I can go out and I can get that for myself, then I too will be happy. I will be satisfied. I will be content in my soul. All right. yeah. Yeah. That is covetousness. Mm-hmm. So why does Jesus warn about covetousness here? Why does Jesus warn about greed here? Mm -hmm. And there is another incredible danger that comes with a greedy mindset. The greedy desire can become so bad that we can become so singularly focused in our desire to gain more that we can become blind we can become blind to all that goes on around us. Mm -hmm. For example, we can become so blind that we will become blind to those that are close to us Mm -hmm. because of our singular focus on gaining more and more. Mm -hmm. This would mean that greed is again full of selfish ambition, which again, we are encouraged in scripture to put away, Mm -hmm. remove it from ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
in our greed and in our selfish ambitions, we can become blind to our own actions. The very actions that we are taking to gain more and more. Mm -hmm. We can not only become blind to our actions, we can become blind to the consequences of the actions that we are taking to gain more and more riches. Now, when we think about those consequences, we will likely think of the worldly consequences. But I want you to know today that there are spiritual consequences to greed and to selfish ambitions as well. Being overcome in greed can cause us to go blind to the one we ought to love most. Being overcome in greed can cause us to go blind to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Being overcome in our selfish ambitions can cause us to go blind to God and all that he has done for us and all that he still does for us today. Now, this is the true danger of greed. Mm -hmm. When we go blind to God because of our selfish desire, our selfish ambitions Mm -hmm. to gain more and more riches of the world and not be satisfied with what God has given to us and what God has done for us. In our quest to gain more and more, we are making a statement that says God's blessings are not enough for me. Our greed is turning to God and saying, God, you are not good enough for me. Your your gifts, your blessings, Mm -hmm. they are not good enough to satisfy me in my soul. To say that God's blessings are not enough Mm -hmm. is to call the Lord a liar. Someone say, how does that make God out to be a liar? Mm -hmm. As James stated, and as we have seen in my sermon a couple of weeks ago, God's gifts, his blessings for us, for us are good and they are perfect. So what we should understand is that greed will put us in opposition Mm -hmm. against the Lord. That is not a good position for us to be in. So do you see how dangerous the mindset, the spirit of greed is today? The desire to gain more and more riches of this world in order to satisfy us in our soul it is actually an empty desire that will go unfulfilled because it is not going to make us happy. It's not going to satisfy us in our soul because we will never be content in our greedy desires. This is an empty desire because there is no end result where greed ends with a gift of being blessed. The desire to gain more and more riches only makes the blessing of contentment elusive, Mm -hmm. evasive. Mm -hmm. Greed will not be able to find that contentment that the soul badly desires. Now, the blessing of contentment is not one that God intends to be elusive or evasive to us. You see, God desires for all of us to experience his blessing of contentment. He wants you to know his blessing of contentment. Mm -hmm. Scripture shows us that this is the case time and time again. Mm -hmm. Again, as I referenced in last week's sermon from James's letter, we saw that the Lord gives liberally and that God gives without reproach. God gives without hesitation. And we say when we say that God gives liberally, that means that God gives much. He does not give little. God gives a whole lot. He gives liberally. He pours out his blessings unto us 
And he pours out a lot of his blessings onto us because the Lord desires for you to be full in your soul. God desires for you to be content in your soul. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Again, in scripture, we'll see in the sixth chapter of Matthew's gospel and the 25th verse there, yeah. that Jesus, he tells us not to worry about our life. That's right. Mm -hmm. Jesus tells you not to worry about your life. All right. What you will eat, yeah. Mm -hmm. what you will wear, mm -hmm. what you will drink. Come on. Mm -hmm. Jesus yeah. tells you, you don't have to worry about it. All right. Now, now why did Jesus tell us that? Because we are so driven today to go out and gain as much as we can so that we can put food on the table yeah. so that we can have something to wear on our backs. Yeah. Yeah. So why did Jesus say, hey, don't worry about it? Mm -hmm. Jesus said this because God desires to be the one yeah. to provide those things for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God desires to provide all of these things to us and more so that we don't have to go out and be that greedy person right. that don't know when to stop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God does not want you to be that person that does not know when to stop. All right. That person that does not know when to stop does not know how to be content. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to be happy. God doesn't want you to be that person. Do you hear me here today? Let us remember that in the Beatitudes, mm -hmm. Jesus stated plainly, blessed are you who hunger now. Mm -hmm. Say it, blessed are you who hunger now. Mm -hmm. In the sixth chapter of Luke's gospel, if you want to see it for yourself, the 21st verse. Mm -hmm. He said, blessed are you who hunger now for you shall be filled. Mm -hmm. When the children of Israel were out in the wilderness, God provided them with manna. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can be out in your wilderness today and God is still going to provide for you. Mm -hmm. He said, blessed are you who hunger now for you shall be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, Jesus said, for you shall laugh. Yes. Don't worry about your life. Mm -hmm. Is what Jesus said. All right. Because God is going to be the one that provides for you to make you happy, mm -hmm. to fulfill you, to make you content. Yeah. Clearly, our contentment was on the mind of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our contentment is on the mind of God and he desires very much for you not to be wandering around as those who wander around with a greedy mindset. All right. All right. The greedy are turning to the world to make them content in their soul where God says, I'm going to provide you with exactly what your soul needs to be satisfied. All right. In order for us to enjoy the blessing of contentment, mm -hmm. there are a few things that we must learn to do. We must actually learn how to be content. Yeah. We must learn how to be satisfied. Mm -hmm. The blessing of contentment has already been given by God. It has already been promised by God. So what we must learn to do is simply learn how to be satisfied with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, learning to be content can certainly be a struggle, can it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> in scripture, we will see that Paul, a man who was certainly strong in the faith, we would say. We will see that even he struggled with being content. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul, he was not one who desired to obtain great wealth in the world. Mm -hmm. He did not desire to gain riches. Right. But apparently 
He suffered from it just as everybody else can. Mm -hmm. See, Paul, he strongly desired to spread the word of God as much as he possibly could. Mm -hmm. So his intentions, we would say were good. We would say, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with spreading the word of God. Yeah. yeah, in scripture, there were times where Paul were clearly upset. There were times where Paul were clearly frustrated when things would inhibit him from being able to spread the word of God as he sought to do. All right. All right. To the Corinthians, Paul, he wrote about this frustration when he believed that the devil had buffeted him with the thorn in the flesh. All right. On other occasions, we find that Paul, he desired to go and minister in Rome. All right, that's right. Mm -hmm. But again, to his frustration, right. Paul often found himself hindered from being able to do so. Whether it was the spirit doing it, preventing him from going to the northwestern region of Asia, mm -hmm. or whether he believed it was the devil doing it, Paul often found himself hindered from being able to do the things that he sought to do. All right. Yeah, yeah. He showed his frustration in this when he complained that Satan had hindered him in his desire to minister in Rome mm -hmm. in his letter to the Thessalonians. All right. All right. So Paul, like many of us, he had times where his selfish ambitions yeah would raise its ugly head. Even when it came to ministering, spreading the word of God, Paul had his own selfish ambitions. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. I believe his selfish ambitions was something that came very early on in his ministering years. Mm -hmm. yeah. I say this because in his letter to the Philippians, in the fourth chapter of Philippians and in the 11th and the 12th verse, Paul, he wrote that I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Yeah, yeah. Paul said, I know how to be abased and I know how to abound. Mm -hmm. He said everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need. Paul, he had learned how to be content in his life, yeah. in what he was doing. Mm -hmm. Paul, he became a man that could write to the Romans. He could write that all things work together for good right. and to those who love the Lord. Mm -hmm. He learned that whatever state he was in, right. whether he was up or whether he was down mm -hmm. for Paul, whether he was in prison or out of prison, right. he learned how to be content. Mm -hmm. He learned how to be satisfied with the position that he was in. Right. He learned how to be satisfied with God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many of us can be satisfied with the Lord when things appear to be going bad for us? All right. We're in fellowship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. In good or in bad, right? Yeah. In sickness or in health, right? right. So I don't know about y'all, but I'm married to God. Yeah. Yeah. I depend or, or, or my mate, if you will, mm -hmm. to, to make me happy in my soul. Oh, yeah. God is the one who I'm in a relationship with. Mm -hmm. And I depend on him making me happy yeah. in yeah. sickness and in health. Right. When things are up for me or when things are down for me. Mm -hmm. And I have learned in my life to be happy with the Lord. Yeah. Because I learned that in my sickness, God made me well. Mm -hmm. in, in my poor health, that God was still with me and that God healed me. Yes, sir. He never left my side. I learned how well. to be content. Well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
You see, Paul, he learned how to put his selfish ambitions mm -hmm. in check. How many of us will learn to put our selfish ambitions in check so that God can satisfy us in our soul so that God can make us happy so that God can make us content in our soul. You see, in order for us to experience the blessing of contentment, we must learn to trust that the Lord will yeah. And that God is diligently working to make us happy in our soul. Well, yeah, yeah. In the sixth chapter of Ecclesiastes, running from the seventh verse through the ninth verse, mm -hmm. you see that Solomon wrote something that I want to close this sermon out with today. All right. All right. You see, Solomon, he came to the same conclusion that we have come to in our message mm -hmm. today that we saw Paul come to as well. Yes. In that sixth chapter of Ecclesiastes, mm -hmm. Solomon, he wrote and he said there, all the labor of man is for his mouth. It is for his mouth, Solomon said. But then you'll see Solomon said that, and yet the soul is not satisfied. It is not content. Solomon, he then went on to say there in that ninth verse, better is the sight of the eyes than the wondering of desire. This talking about the wondering of desire there, Solomon said is vanity and it is grasping for the wind. What Solomon wants you to understand there, what Solomon wants you to know there is that we must recognize what God has already done for us, mm -hmm. what God has already given mm -hmm. to us. In other words, what Solomon is telling you is to look in front of you. Yeah. I would tell you, look in the mirror. All right. All right. See what God has done for you. See what God has brought you through. Realize how good God has been to you. Wow. Yeah. And this again will be hard for those who are of a greedy mindset. Mm -hmm. It will be hard for them because they will never be able to recognize. They will be never be able to see all that God has done for them because they are too consumed with their hunger. Yeah. and with their thirst for more riches of this world. Mm -hmm. I tell you today, the riches of this world, they are elusive. All right. Therefore, making happiness from the riches of this world elusive. Mm -hmm. God's blessings, they aren't elusive. All right. mm -hmm. God's blessings, they are not elusive. Mm -hmm. If only we simply take time to see God, mm -hmm all of his blessings in our life. Yes, yes, yes. When we can do this, we can then be happy. Mm -hmm. We can be happy in our soul mm -hmm. and we'll want nothing more outside of the Lord's blessings. Mm -hmm. Again, in the sixth chapter of first Timothy there and in the sixth verse, we'll see that Paul, he told Timothy godliness with contentment is great gain. The blessing of contentment, finding appeasement, finding satisfaction, finding happiness and peace of mind from the Lord and all that he has done and in all that he has given to us. I tell you today that that is truly great gain. And there is nothing that is better than God's contentment. There is nothing that can beat it. So I encourage all of you to learn today to put away your greed so that greed can stop hindering you from experiencing the blessing of contentment that is given and that is promised by the Lord. Paul, he tells us there in the sixth chapter of first Timothy and in the 11th verse there, he tells us to flee from greed. That is what we ought to do today. Flee from greed, pursue righteousness, pursue godliness, pursue faith, pursue love, pursue patience, Good. Pursue gentleness. Mm.
pursue that blessing of contentment that comes from the Lord. We must recognize when our desire to be content is overcome by the desire to gain more and more riches of this world. Put that ambition of yours in check. And then when you do so, when you learn to lean and depend on God and his providence, I believe and I know for a fact that you will find the blessing of contentment. Amen. 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 Amen.